and especially my son, who, whose name is Kyle. And um, what I uh, came to realize that is that he is the male child described in Revelation chapter 12, which is the reincarnation of, of the uh, Christ spirit. And he is the Messiah. He's now 53 years old, and uh, he's very close to uh, coming down, you know, from, I mean, he, he's a pilot of a, of a uh, you know, spacecraft, and he's going to come down and, and assume his position as uh, the, the uh, prophecy, uh, old and new prophecy of the Bible uh, proclaim. So th- that's basically what I, my contribution from what I've learned but we also know that this is uh, part of the, the um, Anunnaki deception. Okay, Richard. What do you think? Okay. What's your response um, to Richard? To Bruce's question. Well, I'm trying to decipher precisely the question. <laughs> okay, I'll Bruce, you're Bruce very, very eloquent it. and very knowledgeable, so therefore, <laughs> you know, you're you're being, putting on a presentation as well as couching a question in the midst of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> if you could couch it for me more succinctly, I would be most appreciative. Yeah, you're both uh, okay. I like to bond to both you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, um, uh, is the Messiah going to return as the Bible prophesies? Okay. First and foremost, if we are addressing the lineage and incarnation of Christ himself, um, that whole story has been manipulated through very various royalties and various uh, ascendancies and all kinds of different uh, houses that in turn, you know, basically have reworded the Bible into 18 different versions, into 14 different languages. Okay, so there is... The, the truest sense of the Bible itself is the language that Christ himself spoke while he was present on the earth, which is Aramaic. All right? So the Aramaic Bible holds the, the truest content as far as what is recognized as the established or accepted Bible by those in mass. In other words, you have the, the Catholic Bible, you have the Greek Bible, you have the Roman Bible, and you have the Russian Bible, and you have the Ethiopian Bible, and you have the German Bible, and you have the Christian Bible, and so on and so forth. And all of these are parallel stories, but in different languages. And when you take the same story and translate it into a different language, it begins to transform and have different meaning. So, in reference to the second coming of Christ, as the book of Revelations was revealed to you by, by and from, as portrayed by John, it has already happened. The reason being that you see the whole message of Christ, which was never thoroughly understood because it was, it was spoken in parables unto the masses, withholding the sacred truth to only his disciples or apostles at the time, um, was basically one consistent of majorly three golden rules, one being love yourself, the second being love others as you would love yourself, and the third one being treat all others as you would treat yourself. So basically the standards of love and full acceptance of the self. Now, of course, we could get into an hours-long dialogue as to what the self consists of. But the Christ, basically in principle, as a being, entity, and conscious message as to what his, he was diversely projecting unto the Jewish masses and, of course, the Roman Empire at the time of his alleged incarnation, And I say alleged only because, again, it's a matter of perception in this reality where there are two or more, you can co-create an entire complete reality just based on the two of your thoughts melded together in an interdimensional and multiversal universe, okay? Um, So I say that Christ has already reappeared is because his gift unto mankind was was the message that all of us are, in fact, Christ conscious and that as such he he lives in our hearts from the aspect being and the, of the understanding and sharing of love oh <laughs> thank you okay on to susan great answer all right uh hold on let me click this on uh, thank you richard thank you 
you off for now. Susan, what's your response? Who is the Messiah? Um, is he returning? I is think he, he returning? Go I'm ahead. not so sure. Ex- I'm not so sure exactly um, what part of the Bible is true, and it's been so misconstrued and and interpreted in many different ways. It's hard to tell exactly what the persona of the Messiah really is, or if in fact he returned or anything. I'm thinking the Christ was actually referring to the Christ priesthood, which is a a, a, a belief system, a, a, like a, a like a philosophy. From what I'm understanding, and when they say Jesus, they mean Jesus of the Christ. That's what they meant. As far as him being the original Messiah and everything, that's up for debate. That's where the Jewish religion comes from because they don't believe that, that their Messiah came yet. Um, mm-hmm. As far as um, is he already here, um, I'm not so sure if there is a second return. I do know that. It could even be a parable that might even be mirroring the fact that on Ancient Aliens, the series, they say that, oh, well, we're going to return. We're going to return. And then a lot of the Ancient Alien cast are saying, no, they never left. Well, it could be that the, Christ, the return of Christ could be the return of the Anunnaki or the return of the representative of the Anunnaki or something. And, and I think that's why uh, – there, there's a big presence right now on the backside of the sun and the earth and the solar system because they're they're aware of this so-called return of the Anunnaki and they're no listen make no mistake they're evil they're parasitic and they feed off of other entities they are the disembodied entities that have taken on lower evolved forms and they use their vessels uh, and they confiscate them so that they can have nefarious activities. Evil has no rhyme or re- reason. It's like a cancer in a patient. It, it, it doesn't have any logical reason. It's just a parasite. It feeds off of everything. And I think that the Bible and everything, along with the other religions, were specifically designed to subjugate and assert and dummy down the masses, and uh, along with the God gene complex that was put into the human genome to screw them up and make them have to worship something greater than themselves instead of having, having their own self-awareness, self-preservation, Self-integration and self, and self-integration and expansion. And I don't seconds. think that there's going to be a return because I don't think the Christ really actually really existed. I think it might have been a parable by the Anunnaki themselves through the Bible, the the evil Roman Empire and every and the evil elite to go ahead and control and subjugate the masses. And I think the Christ return is in fact the return of the Anunnaki. I think that's what the symbolism means. Wow. Great answer. Thank you. Lots to think about. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get Teresa to answer this question. I hope her her phone is working. Hold on one second. Thank you, Susan. Teresa, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Can you hear me? Who's the Messiah and is the Messiah returning? Well, it depends, again, on ontology, and it depends on the person or the data package of thought forms and intelligence that the question being asked, it's like Q in uh, Star Trek, okay? But I believe that Dr. Uh, Bruce is referring to what in America and in uh, theology is one of the Christian beliefs, as well as the Jews, as Susan referred to. So these are words, folks. These are stories and these are thought forms to separate the masses. Now, what I understand about people dying is there's been many people on the planet that have waited for a Messiah. Now, the way science interprets the Christ in thought forms is uh, like some famous people said is, uh, you know, the greatest day is when you're born and the uh, the second part of you is knowing why. And it the the Christ Messiah, I do uh write, I'm a writer, and I use Christ consciousness as a uh ministry for the universal life forms. And in the universes we all know that people uh, as humanoids get together 
And in order to uh, tell themselves that they are going to be okay as individuals, they create critical mass consciousness. So uh, Christ the Messiah is uh, the critical mass conscious of the word uh, God, but we've had many at many levels of meritocracy. But when you're God realized, as in the old New Age, which is no more because we have the Ascension Age now, the Ascension Age embodies the Christ consciousness in the new epoch of what we call time and space. So that's uh, the answer is people come and go from this planet expecting to be saved. From So what it is is the packet of intelligence inside your consciousness that you know that inside of biological, that is your you, how you think of as you, I. And when you think of the Christ consciousness, the Messiah is the we, you, they thought forms on the outside of you. So once you grow up and become awakened, you realize the inner and the outer is yes. There is no seconds. other. So there is no minus, seconds. there is no plus. There's only zero, mm -hmm. which is all encompassing the Messiah Christ consciousness. Done. Excellent. Wonderful answer. Wonderful. Okay, I'll take a I'll take a I'll take a stab at this one. Okay. So the Anunnaki uh, introduced the story of the Messiah. So people would keep looking outside of themselves for the answer, for someone to come and rescue them, which is a way of disempowering humans because humans if they were dealing with uh, too many humans and not enough Anunnaki, there was a couple incidents where humans realized that the Anunnaki could be harmed, they could be, uh, they, they bled, that they <laughs> had a form that was vulnerable. So they uh, they started religions in order to control the masses. And so they started introducing this Messiah, this is someone outside yourself, you, you can't do it yourself, there's no way you can ever do it yourself. And that kept them from realizing that we are all Christ of consciousness. On the, on the higher level, you know, we have the spiritual aspect. Who are these beings that come down periodically and walk among the um, sentient species of the planet and, and to help them evolve and become conscious and, and enlightened? Now, the historical Jesus, according to the Anunnaki and according to the researchers that I've worked with with my own research, was actually... Enki, and uh, Enki, because he was such a, a, a long-time immortal being, wherever he traveled, um, he would get different names. So he's known by many names in Egypt and Buskatah, and he was um, Aquarius, he was, um, what do you call it, Neptune, um, uh, Poseidon, you know, he's got many names. And, and so so do the gods, they all have many names, because they were so long-lived and he was so short-lived. But the wedding in Canaan, Cana, is actually the wedding between Jesus and Nimma. And Nimma is Mary, and Jesus is Enki. Uh, Nimma and Enki were forbidden to marry because, um, in order to settle a rivalry with the opposing faction, Anu um, had uh, Enki wed Damkina, who was the daughter of the opposing force in order to make a truce so they would stop the wars on the beers. So um, <laughs> that hurt Mamma tremendously. She went off and got pregnant by Enlil. Their son was the nurture. So finally, many thousands of years later, they worked through the politics of their family, and they said, you know, screw this, we're getting married. <laughs> so that's what the wedding at um, Cana was. The two of them finally got married. And they never left, and they're still walking around. And Mary, of course, um, is the king of the, the Fatima, and the, she's the Lady of Guadalupe, and and uh, and, and she uh, walked around, and it should be Maricos, and you know he's the big tall white guy that they were waiting for to return, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my humble opinion, but what do I know? Okay, we're going to put this. We have enough. Time probably for one more question. We're going to turn on Teresa's mic. Question for the group and answer it yourself. Take it away. Is it for Teresa? Teresa? Is it Mike? Okay. Um, yes, regarding the, 
All right, thank you. I consider everybody a part of the Christ consciousness uh, or the thought forms. And as individuals, 